Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing my favorite recipe for Salisbury steak. So why is it called the Salisbury steak? This hamburger steak with gravy was named after a doctor who studied nutrition in the 19th century. According to Smithsonian Magazine, Dr. James Henry Salisbury studied healthy eating during and after the American Civil War. This tasty hamburger patty in a rich mushroom sauce has become one of the favorite dishes of the restaurants and for home cooks. Let's see what we will need to make it. We will need 2 pounds 80-20 ground beef and I'm using ground brisket. As far as the spices and I'm using all dry spices, we will need 1 teaspoon of ground coriander, 1 teaspoon of onion powder, 1 teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 teaspoon of ground mustard seeds, half a teaspoon of Aleppo pepper or chili powder, and 1 tablespoon of parsley flakes. And then of course you will need a salt and pepper, 1 tablespoon of kosher salt and 1 teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. And there are some wet flavor enhancements that are gonna go into our meat, I call them sauces. Which are 2 tablespoons of ketchup, 1 tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and 1 tablespoon of dark soy sauce. For meat binding we will need 2 eggs and 2 tablespoons of plain breadcrumbs. And then I add, you don't have to, one small grated zucchini and one small grated carrot. I like how it adds juiciness to our steak. To fry our steak and also to make a gravy, we're gonna need three to four tablespoons of purified butter, which is also called ghee. Then for finishing your dish and also for garnishing your dish, of course you gotta have some fresh herbs. So I have one small a bunch of parsley, which I'm roughly gonna chop and reserve it for later. Let's make a Salisbury steak mix. In a large mixing bowl, add your ground beef, then add your coriander, onion powder, garlic powder, mustard seeds, Aleppo pepper, parsley flakes, salt, pepper, breadcrumbs, then add your ketchup, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and then we're gonna beat two eggs and we're gonna add this to the mix too. Then right into the bowl we're gonna grate one small zucchini. And I have a quite a large one, so maybe I'm just gonna grate half. <laughs> and then we're gonna grate one small carrot. And this added to the mix, so it brings the uh, juiciness to our steak. Then, of course, uh, put your gloves on. Every time you handle the raw meat, it's always good to have your gloves on. And for me, it's essential because I deal with the camera, filming, and uh, if I need to push the start or the stop button, I have to remove the gloves and do that. Don't overmix it since we do have a little bit of fat content in it and that fat can actually tighten um, your hamburger meat. So as soon as everything comes together, we're just gonna um, cover it with the Serrano wrap and refrigerate it for at least one hour. In the meantime, we're gonna make our mushroom gravy. So of course you're gonna need some mushrooms. I have half a pound of creamy mushrooms and I like these guys. I think they just look better in the dish and they taste better. And um, using the brush, just brush off the um, little dirt off of them. And uh, we're gonna slice them. And of course, when you cook mushrooms, you will need an onion. These guys go together like brother and sister. <laughs> so we're gonna use one large onion and we're just gonna dice it into little cubes. Onion in the gravy is used to provide a flavor and also thickness to our sauce. 
and then you will need a good quality beef broth and we're gonna need three to four cups I usually me measure out four cups and I use three and then add it if I need more and to make a roux we will need two tablespoons of flour less or more depending on how thick you want it then I have two frying pans here one is with higher borders to fry up the steak and to fit all this gravy and one is for the gravy heat up the butter until it starts to sizzle and then we're gonna add uh, mushrooms and there is another reason why we're using clarified butter because this way uh, your mushroom uh, mushrooms will not burn um, to help uh, mushrooms to sweat out an extra moisture we're gonna season them with some salt and pepper and uh, we need to brown them very well and I mean like very well and we're doing it a little bit in reverse we're browning the mushrooms first then adding the onions but you mushrooms have to have almost like a crust like that then we're gonna add our onions and a little bit of butter that we have left there and I guess a little bit of moisture that we have left there is gonna help us just to soften the onions that's all we need to do then add your flour and we need to really cook this flour until it's um, uh, no longer white and it combined with mushrooms and the onions and at this point we're gonna add our um, broth I mean wash your spoon in it you know just swirl around so everything is combined and uh, to make our sauce brown we're gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and uh, we're gonna add one tablespoon of dark soy sauce and I'm using the mushroom flavor soy sauce and look voila your um, gravy all of a sudden becomes brown and uh, to control the thickness of the gravy you can play a little bit with the stock just add it if you need it and of course taste your gravy and adjust the seasoning then close the lid turn off the heat and set it aside our Salisbury steak mix has chilled so we need to form the patties and I use this red cutting board I know it's not very attractive looking but that's what I use for um, uh, meats and poultry and I only use this one so um, you can decide what size of the patties you want you can make them big you can make them small I kind of like them this oblong size and I do not pat them very tightly um, uh, I like the edges of the Salisbury steak to be kind of on the rough side and look at this the little carrot is showing that's a perfect imperfection yes so let's make our Salisbury steak in a large 12 uh, inches in diameter uh, what do you call this a pan chicken fryer pan we're gonna heat up our ghee and also we're gonna heat it up until it sizzles because we want the steak to get a really nice browning and we're gonna add our steak and as you can see I'm lacking some space here but it's no problem because I have one more actually two more to fit so I'm gonna wait till these guys um, cooked a little bit because as soon as they cook they're gonna become kind of shrink they're gonna become smaller so hopefully I will be able to create one more spot to put that last stick in there so um, we're gonna turn them as they start to brown and when you see the edges of your steaks are gonna mm, uh, look a little bit not red <laughs> so this is when you turn them and this way when you get the real nice crust to your steak and of course we don't need them to be cooked completely because they are still gonna be simmering in our gravy so the gravy goes on to them and we're just gonna lift them um, so um, the gravy goes under them and then we're gonna close the lid and simmer our steak for 25 minutes 
traditionally Salisbury steak is served with mashed uh, potatoes so I have that covered I have a pot of mashed potatoes on the stove and uh, let's check on our Salisbury steak after 25 minutes of simmering look at this beauty our steak is done and our sauce is looking amazing so we're just gonna garnish it with some fresh parsley and we're ready to serve on a nice plate and I found this one I don't know the whole scene here is just so appetizing so we're gonna load some potatoes onto the plate and then we're gonna make like a little crater in the middle and that's where our Salisbury steak is gonna go and of course uh, we're gonna garnish it or I should say um, add a little bit of um, steamed green beans and um, pour more of this wonderful gravy on top of your steak it's looking so amazing guys it's just mouth watering and then just garnish with a little bit more of parsley and then I love love this spice mix it's called everything bagel so I'm just gonna sprinkle it on my green beans and we're ready to dig in and look at this our steak is tender our gravy is so delicious yum after all that, I hope you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye!